Hello friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Kristen. I am the maker behind this little corner of the internet, Do So Knits, where I share with you how knitting and other fiber crafts have woven into my life. Mostly it's knitting, but sometimes I get up into crochet and other fiber crafts as well. If you'd like to follow me other places, I am Do So Knits here on YouTube, I am Do So Knits on Ravelry and on Instagram. I also have a Ko-Fi account for this channel if you'd like to help support the channel. It's linked down in the description box below. You can buy me a coffee and you can help support the channel, which helps with giveaways and everything like that. So not too much admin at the beginning of today. Today is episode 55 of my podcast, where I just break down and show you all the things that I've been working on, any finished objects that I have, all of that kind of jazz. It is the first podcast of August, which means I will be pulling and showing entries from the Year of Stash Cow that I'm hosting. If you don't know what that is, I'll link it up above. It's also linked in the description box. But with that, I'll be showing a slideshow of all the entries from July and pulling a winner for that. So make sure you stick around to the end if you participated in that. And I always suggest staying for at least the slideshow I put at the very beginning of that section. And it's always amazing to see all the different projects that come in. People can submit photos and I like to build a little slideshow. And I think it's really, really cool. So that is at the end of this episode, but that does make this episode a little longer than some of my other ones. So I hope you have something to work on. I hope you have something to drink. I'm recording this on a evening after work. So my lighting is a little bit different today. I'm trying out some different things. I'm trying to get prepared for fall and winter when the days are shorter. I typically try to record when there's a little bit of sunshine, but with shorter days ahead, I'm really trying to play with my lighting and see how it goes. Um, also trying a little bit of a different setup. As you can see, you can probably see my hands. I can see my hands a little bit more. I talk with my hands a lot. Um, but you know, just trying to make it a little more interactive feeling. Let me know what you think. We will move into announcements and admin at the beginning. Not a lot, just that my cables and rib hat, which I was designing. If you've been around, you've seen that design, but it is now available for free on Ravelry. The Ravelry site will link you to the Fancy Tiger Craft site, but you know, if you can favorite it, queue it, all that kind of stuff on Ravelry, that really helps with the ratings. I hope you really like the hat pattern. It's a DK weight hat pattern. It alternates between big sections of rib and a really simple braid kind of cable. I think it's a really good beginner cable project. If you've not done a bunch of cables, I think this is a really nice intuitive beginner one. Um, yeah, and it's written for two sizes, a adult small and adult large. The adult large does play a little bit of yarn chicken if you are using a one 100 gram skein of yarn. I do have a really thick folded double brim on there, so you could either not do the folded brim to and you would have plenty to do the adult large, or just make sure you have a little, just make sure you're hitting gauge and that maybe have an extra skein if it's one that you can swing an extra skein of. But yeah, that's really the only admin that I have. I'll have it linked in the description box. I link everything in the description box. I link to project pages of my, my own and then pattern pages as well, and I link to yarns and fiber. So that is all down there. I hope you have something to work on. I am drinking a really hot mint tea right now, and I have my show notes in front of me, and let's dive into it. Let's see what I finished since the last episode. So the first finished object might be one that you noticed, the one that you can see. I have finished my Tolsta Tea, which is a pattern by Rebecca Clow. I casted this on two months ago, and I have finally finished it. This is a, it's a simple raglan. It's DK weight. It is a short sleeve raglan shirt, boxy fit. I knit it down to about my belly button, then did the ribbing. I love this so much. Um, it's been languishing a little bit. It's been sitting in my like two work on pile for 
longer than I want to admit. At least two episodes worth where I didn't show it, which means I didn't work on it. So, and I podcast every two weeks, so that was probably four weeks of it just languishing. And we went to see Oppenheimer the movie, which if you do not know, it is a three hour long movie. And we went to see it in the Alamo, which means we get there about 30 minutes early to order our food, get drinks, um, we usually go around lunchtime when it's there's less, less people. Go around lunch, we order our food. So we're there for 30 minutes of previews. And then other than when I was eating, I was working on this. And we did not know that movie was three hours before we went. But I brought this with me because none of my socks were in that perfect state to take to the movies. And this was really nice. When I was reading, I could work on it, and so I knew taking it to the movies was going to be pretty easy because I mean, DK weight yarn in the dark is pretty easy to knit. It's easier to knit than my socks, um, and it felt really easy to work on, and we left the movie, and I come home, and I was looking at the sweater, you know, settling down after our dinner and looking at it, getting ready to knit, and I was like, you know, I think I'm ready for the ribbing. It took me three hours of body knitting in Oppenheimer to finish this. It languished for four weeks when all I had was three hours of knitting on the body. That's, it's crazy to me. If I had just been doing like 30 minutes a day, a little bit every day, this would have finished so much sooner. I could have been wearing it earlier. But basically when that happened, I went and picked up both my sleeves. I knit the sleeves to the recommended length in the pattern. I think it was, you know, it's a little less than an inch. A little, definitely a really short ribbing for the cuff. Bound that off, did both of them. And then I put the sweater on my barber cords and I blocked it before I did the bottom ribbing. Just because I knew from my swatch that this yarn grows. It is, let me tell you what it is, it is the Vitalana Lofty DK, which was a knit crate yarn. I have one left. So this is it in the skein. It's a Vitalana Lofty. This is the color Firewood. It's 48% merino, 20% alpaca, and then 32% cotton. So it's really a nice mix. It's cotton, so it feels lightweight. It feels like it doesn't feel hot, but the alpaca keeps it warm. It's really nice, I think a really nice versatile raglan. But because of the alpaca and from my swatch, I had done a pre-measurement block and a post-measurement of my swatch and I knew it was gonna grow. So I blocked it before I started that ribbing just to make sure that it wasn't gonna end up too short and I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted that length to be. But it sits right about my belly button, maybe a little past my belly button. The ribbing probably starts at my belly button and then there's about an inch or so of ribbing at the bottom. But I love it, it's just a boxy tee. Um, I used about 410 grams. 400 grams, so four skeins, no. That's incorrect. I used three full skeins and I had to kick up my fourth one for about 10 grams worth. That's right. <laughs> I just had to do like four or five rounds of the ribbing in that new skein. So I have a lot left over. I have about 190 grams of this left. I'm thinking I might make a hat with the leftover 90 grams. So it's maybe just uh, like one by one rib hat. And then I will probably end up de-stashing this one. So, if you're interested, check out my D-stash or feel free to message me, we can always talk. Um, yeah, so that's this sweater. I finally finished it. It languished for a long time when it shouldn't have. Um, other details you might wanna know, I did a size six, but my gauge was closer to a size five. I added bust starts to bring that front down a little bit because I do have, uh, you know, a bit of a bust more than average. And so I used the Coco Knits tutorial to add those bust darts. It's for shadow wrap turns, which I really like. I feel like you can't see them. Also, the marling of this yarn really, I think, blends the bust darts pretty well. 
And yeah, US 9 for the body and a US 7 for my ribbing. So it knits up at a pretty loose gauge and I love it. Yeah, and that's all the notes that I have on it. I highly recommend this pattern. Since I started this, Rebecca has also come out with a fingering weight update. So if you buy the Tulsa tee, it comes with both DK weight or fingering weight instructions, which I think is really cool. And I really, I love the length of the sleeve and I love the boxy fit. I've worn it many, many times and I probably will be wearing many more. And later in my acquisition section, I may have some yarn to show that I have bought for more of these or other t-shirts. So then we'll move into a work in progress or a finished object that was a little more frequent. It was a work in object work. Wow. <laughs> this was a work in project. This was a work in progress on the last episode, but I have now finished it. These are my Desert Vista Dye Work socks for July. This is the colorway Graffiti Elephant and I did two socks for myself. These are my Bryce Bun sock blockers. I get these from Jimmy Beanswell. I'll have them linked down below as well. But this yarn is Desert Vista Dye Works Viso, which is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base. The colorway is Graffiti Elephant. I did a two by two rib for three color stripes. And then I did the same number of stripes for the leg. I think it was four repeats and it was about 48 rounds or so. I did a German short row heel on both the foot and a toe. I really love how this colorway is working up. I think it, I like the like contrast of just like one gray and then a multicolored speckle for a stripe. I think it looks really cool and I'm excited these are done and that I've shown you. I feel like I say this every time. I'm excited that I'm showing you because now I can wear them. And yeah, these are just my basic vanilla sock pattern that I go to. I reference, usually it's like the, it's a hodgepodge of K's vanilla socks on nine inch and Mina's vanilla sock recipe. That's where I get my German short row heel from. And then I pull the toe from Hooka Canyon's patterns. So it's all a hodgepodge of like my favorite elements from all the socks that I've done. But these are done. And also I do a 56 stitch for myself and these are the small sock blockers because I have little feet. I wear about a US six and a half to seven depending on the type of shoe. Sometimes I can wear a six. So yeah, that is my Next finished object that I have. Glad those are done. Alrighty. And then my last finished object is a big one. And I wanted it to be done in the last episode, but it is done now and I'm so excited it's done. So this is my Night Shift by Andrea Mallory. It is a shawl pattern. It's written for worsted weight yarn. I used US 8 needles and I finished it. I have a photo to show you, so I'll pop that up at the end so hopefully you can get a good look of the whole thing together, but I will show it the best I can in the screen. But this is my night shift. Also, I blocked this in my tuft woolens and it smells so good. <laughs> I'm so glad that this is done. I think it looks so good. Okay, so colors. I used a US 8 for this. The background color is a natural merino yarn that I got from Das Wollschaft in Germany. It's a natural merino. And then the two colors for the contrast colors were some of my hand spun. I had spun them to do a cowl and then decided to do this pattern instead. They were about a worsted to bulky-ish yarn, so they really pop out in the shawl. And you can see there are the short sections and there are these bigger sections. I switched colors after the big bumps into the small bumps. And then you may see here where I ran out of my hand spun, but I wanted the shawl to be just a little bit longer. So in this last repeat, 
I used some Spin Cycle, not the Dye in the Wall, Spin Cycle Dream State Leftovers. It was the colorway Rusted Rainbow. So here it's a little more closer to the brown and then orange near the end. And I finished off the shawl with that. So you definitely can tell, looking at it from a distance, that I have almost like a color block at the end, but I don't think it bothers me that much. Up close, you can see that there is a slight difference. The real test for this is I asked Shane, like, do you notice that there's a big difference? And he said, no, that part's just, it's just more blendy. <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess it's fine. I did add one extra repeat to this pattern because I wanted it to be a bit longer because I really wanted to make sure that I could wrap it around like so and it not fall off my shoulders. I really wanted to make sure that these wing tips were, you know, long enough to stay put, but not so tight that I felt like I was choking. So I feel like this is like a really nice on top of a coat kind of shawl. And here, like this, I feel like this contrasting stripe looks really nice. Like it can kind of tuck under. You can see, oh yeah, that's brown. And, oh, it looks so good. I'm really happy with this. When I went to block this, the eye cord on the edge was really curling a lot. It was curling in and I was really worried I was gonna lose some of that length. So when I did block this, I put my blocking wires in the long side and the top, but not the long triangle. This is my triangle, can you see it? So I put a blocking wire here, stretched it up, and a blocking wire here of going across to really make sure that both of these were laying flat and then the diagonal was able to stretch based on those two. I think it turned out really well. This is all mosaic knitting, so the rounds where you knit the color, you are only ever holding one color at a time. You never have to hold two. And the way you do mosaic is like a slip and knit kind of pattern. They go so quickly. I love it so much. I highly recommend this pattern if you have hand spun or if you have like leftover color changing worsted weight, any weight you really could throw together because like I said, I wanted it a bit longer so I just added an extra repeat. Um, and Andrea in the pattern has both the color formula that she used because she used seven different colors of Dream State, I believe. I think it was seven but how she changed those to make sure she didn't run out. But she also gives you like the generic small bump, big bump, my very technical small bump, big bump, slip stitch sections. She gives you that basic formula and then you can play with the colors as well if you just wanna mix and match, pull from your stash. It's really lovely. I do not regret adding that extra repeat at all. But I do feel also, I was a little worried. It was a little stiff before I blocked it. But now, like, do you see how it's like, it moves, it's drapey. I'm very excited for this. I can see this as a, like, over my shoulders when it's cold and I wanna read kind of shawl blanket kind of thing. I love it so much, so. This is my night shift, another big finish object for the month and I'm so glad it's done. I really was pushing to finish this because I wanted to start my Attune shawl, but I was not allowed to start another shawl until I finished my night shift. So that was the main thing pushing me to get it done. Plus if I got it done before the end of the month, that was just like another thing off my needles and I was really excited about that. And yeah, those are, let me double check. Those are all of my finished objects since the last episode. It's been about two weeks. I had a, but like I said, this had like three hours left. The night shift didn't have much. I had a repeat left and then one sock of two for the, um, the Zivisa Dye Work socks. So it's not like I did all this knitting in two weeks. It was a lot of projects that were really close to finishing and I'm glad they're done. I'm glad we're moving into the new month with a little less things on the needles. Although I still have 
so many things. I need to get off my needles. So let's move into works in progress and let me show you what I've been working on. So my goal for August right now, it could change. It's subject to change at any point, but my goal right now for August is to finish all my sock whips for summer sock camp because summer sock camp ends on August 31st. I also have some other minor goals such as finish spinning a hand spun for my tessellated pullover, more to come in the future, and work on my cozy comfort throw for 30 minutes a day. That's another goal. But the main one is finishing up these languishing sock whips. Another reason I like to do this in August is because I'm a part of a group on Ravelry, Ravelry called Sock Knitters Anonymous, where they do different challenges every month. They do challenges of techniques, so one month could be cables, and they also do challenges of choose a pattern from a specific designer. You can choose one or the other kind of challenge to participate, to enter in for prizes. And their August challenge, one of the challenges is finishing up languishing sock whips. They have to have been started before June th or July 1st of this year, but vanilla socks can count. And normally vanilla socks do not count for them. So I wanna finish as many socks as I can. Currently I have four pairs of socks on my needles one of those pairs will not count for this knit along, so I'm trying to finish those first, and those are the ones I'm gonna show you first. So the first socks that I have are my Advent socks that I was doing, my Advent in July socks. I did not do all these socks in July, obviously, since I'm talking about them in August. So I'm knitting these with my 2021 Cozy Knitter Advent Skein. I pre-ordered mine for this year. Did you order one of the Cozy Knitter Advent Skeins? I'm really excited because they posted that this year was gonna be more of a fade versus random stripes. I'm so excited. So I have this Advent Skein coming this year, but the nice thing with this is it comes on the Bliss sock base. It's fingering weight 80-20. But it's 120 grams, and so you get 24 stripes, but it's in there twice. So you can make two pairs of socks with this. And so I had made socks for myself, and I wanted to use the leftovers. So I was making a pair of socks for my mom. So I was working on these concurrently, and then I kind of broke that. So this is sock one. This is where I was last time. And I'm doing these on US ones, 2.25 millimeter magic loop. And I am on the last stripe and working on a two by two ribbing and going to be binding off soon. I just did the last three stripes in the cozy knitter color to do the ribbing. I didn't do a contrast. And as you can see, there is no heel in here because I opted to do an afterthought heel. So I have stitches. I have one stitch marker here and one there marking my first and 30th stitch so then that way I can find where to do it because I just want to make sure it's in line with the heel. So this one is pretty close. I'm on the last color and you can see how there's 24 different colors in there. Isn't that cool? So yeah, I did these toe up Having known that I was just, go I like doing these toe up, honestly, because I can just cast on and then bind off once I run out. I don't have to worry about doing the math to make sure my toe's in the right spot. I know I could do a contrast color toe, but I really just wanted to do just the stripes. The contrast heel will probably be white, but I'm not 100% decided yet what color I will do. So then my second one, which I don't think I've worked on at all since the last episode, it is here. So I have a good amount of sock to go. And those are those. I'm doing 60 stitches for these. 
I will do a cut in afterthought heel and then they will be done and they will go in my gift basket to gift at the holidays. The next pair of socks that I have to show you are my vanilla socks that I started for Shane. Oh, and let me see. This was in my Mountain State Stitches mountain bag. These socks are in my Stolen Minutes bag. I love these for the socks. But I'm also very close on these. These ones will count for that Sock Knitters Anonymous challenge because I started them on June 30th which I normally never start socks that close to the beginning of a new month because I like to try to finish socks in the same month that I start them. Otherwise, they end up languishing like this. But something told me to start these, and I'm so happy I did because now they will count. So this is a self-striping yarn. It's a German yarn. It's called Lena Grossa Melienwelt Polar, number 406. It's a self-striping yarn. There's 250 gram skeins in there and they match. So I did 60 stitches for these and that's the sock. Isn't that so cool? So you knit the cuff until this color changes. So I did a two by two and then you knit all the way down until this color and they have a picture on the box of what color to look for. Do the heel and then more striping for the foot and I'm ready to do the toe on these. So I need to switch over to um, DPNs or Magic Loop to do the toe because I don't like doing it on my 9 inch circular, which is what this is. It's a US Zero. And yeah, this is a tall sock. It's massive, do you see? Compared to my head. It's massive. I really love the striping though. I think it looks really cool. So this one is ready for the toe. And this second one, because I was also knitting these concurrently, which I'm very thankful that I did. I done the second heel and I've done the decreases. And now this is just ready to go in the round. For both of these, I did a square heel turn, which is now my go-to heel turn. And yeah, I've really just been enjoying this yarn base it's that german really rustic it'll hold up forever kind of yarn feels really good to work on it i love seeing the colors change i am a real sucker for self-striping because i like getting to that next little bit and these were like a real surprise because so much was different there's like small stripes and the big stripes and then I had no idea what the foot was doing. There was tiny stripes and a big stripe and tiny and a big. They were just really fun. I have another colorway of this yarn that I'll probably save to do in the future. But these are definitely a nice go-to to have. I've loved working on these. Then the last pair of socks that I have to show you, which if you're counting, this was pair three. I have four pairs. The fourth pair is in one of our cars and I need to grab it out before Shane takes the car again but I'm not planning to work on those for a little while I got other socks ahead of them but these are my blueberry waffle socks that I had started I believe in July no maybe it was June the Ravelry project page is linked down below but I started these on a whim just wanted something colorful and then I set them aside so this is one of my Patreon sock sets. It's called Summer Sunrise. This is the sock base. This is the main color. So for the Patreon, you get a 50 gram main skein and a 20 gram mini. So this is the set. And then I paired one of my Homespun House mini skeins with it. So this is my Blueberry Waffle Sock combination. And I was on the leg a little bit and I've done a little bit of work on them and I've now done the heel. So I'm also doing these Magic Loop on a 2.25 millimeter, which is probably why they stalled out a little bit. It's also probably because they're patterned and pattern socks for some reason I just don't lean to as often as my vanilla ones, but this is what they look like. Ah, aren't they so bright and fun? So I did a 20 round cuff 
And I will say that color on the screen, even though my background is kind of dark, this is pretty accurate. This is a neon yellow, 18 rounds for the blue 2x2, two two, and then the blueberry ruffle pattern down the leg. I did 42 rounds of the leg, because I didn't count before doing the heel. I was just like, oh, that's good length. 42. I couldn't stop at 40. Of course. So 42 rounds for the leg. Very specific number. And then I did a shadow wrap heel. I've heard so many people talk about the shadow wrap heel and I have just been a German short row girly. You know, I learned a heel flap and gusset and I learned a German short row heel and I was like, great. I don't need to learn another heel. But I kept hearing about this heel and so I finally, I was talking to Anne of Craft Nut Yarns and I asked her if she'd done the shadow wrap heel and she said she had and that she liked it. And so I decided I was going to do it on these socks. I watched um, Earth Tones Girl, Denise, her video on how to do the shadow wrap heel and I'll link it up here. It's a great tutorial. I had no questions while doing it and I love this heel. It is so easy to do. You can't lose your place. It's so distinct where you do your turns and there are no holes. Like look at that. I love this little ridge it gives and there's no holes. So if you want a little comparison between, so this is a German short row heel and you can see a little bit where there's a little bit of pulling versus this one. You like knit in these turns so that they become really sturdy. Now granted this one is on a blocker so it is a bit stretched but this feels so sturdy to me. I love it and like that's me stretching it out. So honestly this is probably my replacing my German short row heel. I loved doing it. If you can't tell Ebony is here. We have to get your tail out of the camera. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So very happy about these. These have been so much fun to work on. The blueberry waffle pattern is written for DK, but you can easily convert it to a different stitch count. It's a four stitch repeat. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's really fun. It creates such a nice texture. So I need to work on these a little more often. I just need to find time to incorporate them in. <laughs> I need to make these probably like my TV knitting project because my vanilla socks are easy to take when I'm out and about, but ones that are patterned, I don't gravitate as to as often. And let me show you, this is also in a Mountain State Stitches bag. This is one of the cork bottom ones, but it's a small size. Both the Mountain State Stitches and my Stolen Minutes are my go-to sock knitting bags. And I like that Stolen Minutes has a zipper, Mountain State Stitches has a drawstring, so I can kind of flip-flop between what I'm feeling in the moment. Alrighty, there's more. So the next thing is my new shawl that I have started. I wanted to finish my night shift because I've been wanting to start my Attune shawl. I've been mentioning this for so long and I feel like I haven't shown you anything and I've just been teasing you because Andrew Mowry is doing her spin it to knit it knit along with the Attune shawl and I've shown it to you many times. I showed you the, yarn, the fiber on the bobbin. I showed you the yarn once it was spun and now I'm going to show it to you now that I've started the project. So this is the Attune Shawl. I'm using a US 4. And these are my colors. <laughs> this is really funny too. So these are my colors. This is my main skein. This is Hedgehog Fibers DK Colorway Pet Rock. It's like a nicey pink, but it has cute little speckles in there. And I'm, it's in one of my yarn cozies. 
that I've been obsessing over. And then this is my hand spun kicked up. Isn't it pretty? Isn't it so pretty? I love it. Um, but as you can tell, <laughs> my yarn cozy is a little small for this. The yarn cozies are made for a 100 gram skein and this is like a 200 gram skein, but I was determined to get this yarn cozy to fit around it. Um, you know, she's a, she's a little snug in there, but it's working. It's got the purpose. I can still pull from the center. It'll shrink with time. It'll be fine. So that's my hand spun. These are in my Cocoa Knits Craft Caddy because they're easily accessible. And this shawl is not a, this shawl is not leaving the house. It is a, I'm working on this shawl at home. I have to focus while I'm working on this. It's barely a TV project. I don't know how I'm gonna get this done because it takes so much focus. But here are my labels. This is the Hedgehog Fibers. And then this is my handwritten card. This is how I take all my notes for my hand spun. So my hand spun was 211 grams and it was 441 meters. So let me show you my actual progress and then I'll talk you through some of my thoughts. Are you ready? All right. So the shawl is half fisherman's rib and half brioche. So this is the side where the hedgehog fibers is kind of the main color. This is the half fisherman's rib. And this is the brioche. This is a center spine. And then this is my hand spun with the half fisherman's rib on that side. So this is my little baby, my little baby hand spun shawl. I am loving this so much. I did have to restart the beginning twice because my stitch count was off after I finished the first repeat. So I restarted, you do a garter tabs cast on. So I was able just to repick that up and start over. But now I'm in a nice rhythm and I love it so much. This is on a US 4 so the needles are tiny-ish but the stitches are large and it's so squishy. It is like plump and thick and I love it. Having knit this up I can definitely tell how my hand spun is probably closer to like maybe a worsted but I think once this blocks and the super watch kind of blooms and stretches it'll look really really nice. Now the contrast color in this shawl said a oh, so I have 441 meters which is about 500 yards. I need about 600, 650 yards. So I am definitely short. However, this shawl, you do increases in this brioche half fisherman rib until you're content. There are two sizes kind of in the pattern for Andrea's two samples and how many repeats she did. But the first section is that, and then the second section is the garter border. So this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to try to knit to those recommended repeats for this brioche and half fisherman's section. Then, depending on how much hand spun I have left, moving into the garter border, I may just because you're supposed to continue striping in the garter border with your two colors so depending how much i have left i may do a some striping or i may just switch and do just the garter border in this color only i'll have to see once i get closer how much hand spun i'm having left so that's kind of my backup plan let me know what do you think do you think that would look good do you think I should do something else? I had started spinning another colorway because I thought it would be my backup. However, that has now become a project for some my, my tessellated pullover. I'm very excited to show you that. I'm not showing it today, but 
I'm spinning my hand spun for the tessellated pullover. Who am I becoming? This is, that'll be the, I did my night shift. This was my first time spinning for a project. This is a tune shawl, and now I'm spinning for a sweater. It's nice because it's at least another, it's a mosaic, so it'll be like the night shift, so I can kind of flub some of this beginner stuff. But, I love this. I love using my hand spun in shawls. And it was funny because Shane was like, how many shawls do you need? And I was like, they're just really easy for my hand spun because it's really forgiving. And I love this lightness, but the hand spun colorway plays really well with the pet rock. And on this side, I think it just looks, I'm so, I'm glad this is coming out the way I envisioned. I think it looks not to toot my own horn, but I think it looks stunning. So yeah, that is my tune shawl. I'm very excited about it. I will say it is, it's going to be a slog. Because you knit each row twice because you, you know, it's brioche. So you knit going across with your main color and then you have to slide all your stitches back. And then you knit all the way across with your contrast color and then you turn and then you knit all the way across with your main color and then you slide everything back and then you knit across with your contrast color and then you turn <laughs> so it's going to take a little bit of time i am definitely not a person that can knit brioche without paying attention i have to pay attention brioche is not mindless for me and yeah i just definitely do not have it memorized <laughs> It will take a little bit of time, but I really, it's really fun to do. So even though it does take a little more brain power, it's pretty fun. So that's my tune shawl. I'll stop blabbing on about it. I know, I know. But yeah, I'm very excited about that. It makes me smile. All right, let's move on to the next work in progress. Yeah, there's another one. Alrighty, this is the last work in progress that I have to show you. And I'm mostly showing it because I really love it and I think you guys will want to see a little bit of an update so this is my scrappy corner to corner it is a crochet blanket I'm knitting it all with my Deza Vista Dye Works scraps that's all my self striping yarns I've done this Desert Vista Dye Works knit along for two years I'm working on my third so I have tons of scraps left and I started this scrappy blanket with them so I'm gonna show you where I started and where I'm at so that's the beginning. And there we are. So diagonally, we have from here to here. And I've made some decisions. I'll give you some updates. Um, the crochet corner to corner, there's tons of free patterns on Ravelry. The one that I'm using is linked, but mine that I'm using, ha I thought the instructions were really clear, and it tells you how to make a rectangle versus just a square, which is what I'm going to be doing. I'm using fingering weight, Desert Vista Dye Works scraps, all shelf striping. So this is what a corner to corner looks like in self striping. I'm tying all the colors together with magic knots, and then I use one drop of fray check on my magic knot to like really secure it. Fray check is, it's basically fabric super glue. You can kind of feel where the knots are, but only if you like stumble upon one. And I'm just happy that they feel really secure. Like there's a knot right here, I found it. Let me see if I can show it to you. All right. There. And see this one's like, normally they kind of get tucked into a stitch or like somewhere, but that one's kind of in between stitches. So yeah, I've been updating my project page with the different colorways. I think I have on there the order of operations that are going in. I also have some scraps from my coworker Kim, who is also doing the Desert Vista Dye Works Challenge, but she ends up with like scraps that are this big versus me who ends up with scraps this big. And that's after doing a yarn cozy. So this is my next color on deck. I am using my Furls crochet hook. It is a three and a half millimeter needle. This is one of the wooden ones. I love it. I think it fits really nicely in my hand. And 
I'm trying to work on this on Sundays. Sometimes I pull it out a little more often when we're watching TV because I've memorized it. It's basically, you know, it's like granny square clusters, but going across with some increases. My end goal is I'm going to do a 45 by 60 inch rectangle. So I'm getting close. I have a little marker showing from this little guy. From this round, I needed to do 10 rounds before I could start making it a rectangle. That's when the one edge will each will equal 45, and then I will stop increasing, and that will be luxurious. And then once the other side reaches 60, I'll be able to start decreasing, which will be even more luxurious. I have no idea how much yarn I've used. I'm hoping I don't run out. But I love this. It's crazy. It kind of looks like clown barf, but I just want, I love the drape, like look at that. It's a perfect weight and I just want it to be sitting on our lazy boy in the living room where both of us have been tending to read more often. It's almost a fight for who gets to read in that chair. Not really. If I'm there, I usually get it. But if Shane's there, Shane likes to take a lot of naps and he reads in that chair quite often. So I just want this on that chair to snuggle up under. And like, it's pretty close. Like I can like, you know, but I, I looked up um, like throw size standard measurements and I think a 45 by 60 will be nice and manageable. 50 by 60 is like the standard throw, but I feel like 45 by 60 is, that seems a little more doable. So yeah, I just kind of pull a random scrap Tie my magic knot and I keep going. I kind of alternate between scraps that are smaller and scraps that are a bit bigger. Um, just cause sometimes it's nice to get that endorphin of finishing and it just lives in this basket. So yeah, those are all of my works in progress. And yeah, I'm gonna change my battery really quick. All right, so I see that I have very quickly lost the light. The little bit of outside light that I had is gone. I can't turn this light on because then it's too much backlight and I don't have overhead lights in this room. So I'm really hoping this like little corner, this little bubble of light that I have made with my studio lights will get us through to the end. I apologize, I, I had to work on this. Or I just gotta not record at night. We're gonna have to see how this works out. The lack of an overhead light in this room is a real hindrance. Anyway, my acquisitions. I brought in some things this month. Before this podcast, I have just taken in my Yarnable for the month, but I have gotten a few other things. So this is my Patreon sock set. This is the June colorway. That's pretty accurate. So this is the color Summer Sun. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's really pretty. It's really, really pretty. Molly from A Homespun House has already knit these up and I've seen what it looks like. I think it looks really gorgeous. It's a really fun color. So I'm very excited to have this and I'm loving the space. Probably won't cast these on anytime soon since I already have some orange socks on my needles, but we shall see. So the next yarn set that I got, this is a cesium yarn sock set. This is in the colorway for Sock Week for Nitty Natty. It is called Sea Slug. It's 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. Sea Slug is the main color. Nude and Branch Red is that, and then Dorid Purple. And as much as my background is dark, you know, this feels pretty accurate. So at least you can see the color of the yarn, even if you can't see <laughs> everything. So I got this sock set. I saw it knit up from people using it in sock week and I just, you know, I didn't want to miss it. Sea socks are pretty cool and I really liked this colorway. So I snatched this up as well. You know, and I was doing really well on using more stash than what I brought in. And then I watched a video from TLC Yarncrafts. 
If you do not know Tony Lipsy, you should check out her channel. She does amazing crochet tutorials. It's where I got that Tunisian crochet baby blanket in the corner. And she does these yarn snob reviews, reviewing big box store yarns. And her newest one that came out this week featured a yarn from Joann's that was 100% cotton. 100% cotton and DK weight. So a nice summer yarn. And I'm pretty sure Tony gave it a 10 out of 10 hooks, which for me, I was like, I'm pretty sold. So I went on my Joann app and this yarn was pretty affordable. It was on sale. Plus Joann's had like a curbside pickup coupon, which stacked on the sale yarn. So did I buy three colorways for three sweater quantities for a, a sweater like this or to do the new summer saunter by Samantha Gurin? Yes. Yes, I did. So these are my three colors. So I got six skeins of each, three different colors, 18 skeins total. So this is the yarn. It is K and C, which is knit and crochet. I'm pretty sure this is Joann's in-house yarn. It is the essential. It's 100% cotton. It feels so soft. It does not feel like sugars and cream. I would relate it to dishy almost, but a bit softer. It's a nice cotton. I really like it. So this is the color. So I'm going to put it on screen because I don't know how to say that word. A really pretty chestnutty brown. It's blowing out a little bit. This is a little more true. So I got those. I just want to say, so my six skeins of each color with my coupons, it was $18. Just so you know. It would have been $15, but I got extra. So it was on sale plus 25% off pickup. So check those coupons. And then I got, this is called Rainforest. A really pretty blue teal. It's a little green. I really like it. And then a more minty green of Gulf, Gulf side. And you can see it's almost shiny from it's really nice. It's a really nice. It looks a little more blue. It's definitely a mint. Minty blue. So I got those three colors. There were tons of colors to pick from. I do not regret this. Honestly, it took me a really, it was really hard to pick the colors. I almost got like six different colors to do a striped one and then I didn't, but I'm very excited to have this, honestly, and what put me over the edge is Tony said that uh, they are likely to discontinue this or at least stop carrying it in the upcoming months because it's cotton and they don't typically carry cotton in those colder months. So I wanted to snatch it up and I was so glad that I did. All my dye lots are the same. The store, the staff did a great job with the curbside pickup. And yeah, so that was my big stash buster for the year. Stash buster in the sense that I now have some work to do on getting some stash out. But I'm happy to have a little DK cotton stash. DK I feel like is my favorite weight to knit sweaters and garments in now. Worsted's nice, so they go quick, but they can be a little heavy. DK just feels nice. I know probably once I start doing fingering weight ones, I'll also really like fingering weight garments, but we're just going to live in the DK world for right now. Great. All right. That's all my acquisitions. So we'll move into my yarn stats for July and I'll make it quick. Alrighty. I kind of gave you a little bit of a rundown with that acquisition section that my stash is up for the year at the end of July. So if you do not know, if you are new, my goal is to use more stash this year than what I bring in. And I track it on a skein basis on a month to month. So when I finish a sweater like this, even though I used three skeins and 10 grams of another, that is four skeins out of my stash. So I do not count scraps as my stash. Yeah, just full skeins. Anything from this bad boy right there is what I count. So this month I got out 21 skeins. Four for this, 
four for my night shift, one for this pair of socks, so that's nine. Ten would be my seaside socks. Oh, I read that wrong. Ten, so ten out. I brought, I got ten out. I brought in 21. 18 of that KNC, 19 would be my cesium, 20 is my homespun house, and 21 is the yarn from Yarnable that I showed last time. I also de-stashed eight skeins this month, and that was a mix of giving some yarn away at my local knit night and my giveaway from this knit along last month. So that was eight skeins out, which gives me a month change of a plus three. And you know, with bringing in 18, a plus three over a month, not bad. Especially when it's 18 plus some others to so 21. Pretty proud about that. I was in like a negative 10 before I got this Joanne yarn. But that does bring my year to date stats up to a plus nine skeins in, which I'm going to take. I feel like that's pretty good. My stash is pretty, I feel like it's kind of at an equilibrium. If I can get some of these sweater quantities out, I feel like that's the underlying theme. If I can just get some sweater quantities done, it would help, wouldn't it? <laughs> but it also involves not buying more sweater quantities before you knit sweaters. What can you do? So yeah, I'm at a plus nine for the year. Isn't that bad? At least I'm in the single digits. But let's move on to something a little more fun, and let's look at your community stats for the year of Stash Cal. So as I mentioned at the beginning, the year of Stash Cal is a knit along that I'm hosting for this entire year of 2023. The only rule is to knit a project using stash that you had from before 2023. And it's any kind of stash. If you have fiber stash you want to use, if you have sewing stash, yarn stash, any stash that you had from before this year counts. You also do not have to do your project exclusively in that stash either. If you have a, this is always my example, if you have a sweater and it has color work and you use stash for the color work part, and then the rest of the sweater, you buy a main color skein. Perfect. As long as you use something from Stash that was from before 2023, it counts. You don't have to use full skeins. You can use scraps. Use whatever you want. If you'd like to enter in for prizes, use the Google form. It's linked down below. I also link to the video where I go about explaining it. Maybe I explain it just fine here in all these videos now. But use the Google form to submit your entries if you want a chance of winning prizes. You don't have to submit entries for that month. I just pull on a monthly basis. Great. <laughs> so for July, you guys had a good month. This was one of the most active months for the knit along in a few months. I think everyone's getting them maybe their knitting mojo back as summer is, you know, coming closer to an end. Maybe people are just having more time. But there were 79 entries this month, and I like I love to show the slideshow, so let's look at all these projects.
So the top categories this month were socks and slippers, sweaters and cardigans, and then home items. You guys had 10% of these entries were home item things this time. So that's really cool. For your stats, you guys got out 190 skeins this month and 56 mini skeins. It was 15,376 grams. So way to go. And then so year to date, I love looking at these numbers. Year to date, it's 1,279 skeins, 442 minis. I saw that there was a advent blanket this month. So that was like 25 mini skeins in itself. So good. And then this, 104,456 grams. I may have to start talking in kilograms instead of grams because we're getting big numbers here. And yeah, okay, so time to pick our random winner. Every month I like to look and pick a random winner. 
And so this month, the random number generator picked number 25, which is Emily with the username Emily K 27. They made these really gorgeous Daphne socks. Look at that lace detail. They're nice and fuzzy too. They look so lovely. The yarn and the lace together in these, the detail, it is so good. They used one skein for this project and 60 grams total. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So Emily, please make sure you send me an email. It's linked down in the description box. It is do so knit at gmail.com. We will get your contact information. Let me know your address and we will get a prize sent out to you. And with that, if you would like to help support the channel or these giveaways, if you are a maker that would like to donate prizes, I would love to show them on the podcast and give them away for these giveaways. Or if you'd like to help cover the shipping or anything like that, my Ko-Fi account is linked down below. You can buy me a cup of coffee on a one-time basis or on a monthly basis if you would like to just help the channel, keep it up and running. Only if you enjoy this content, no harm, no foul. I just like to mention that I have that because I haven't mentioned my Ko-Fi in a little while. I've actually disbanded my Patreon account, so I only have my Ko-Fi account now. So I just think it might be a little bit easier. Um, if you become a monthly member, I'll continue having your name on my end screen, but otherwise it's just a nice way to help support the channel and I really appreciate you guys for that and if you can't afford a monetary donation I completely understand just liking and subscribing really helps the video find new knitters and that's really what I love to do I love to just sit here and talk with you guys about my knitting and what I'm making because my husband doesn't care <laughs> I mean he knows that I make but you know when I ask him what do you think of this he's like it's a sock so I appreciate sitting here and chatting with you guys and sharing what I have to people who understand what I'm talking about. So even just a like and a subscribe help helps us find other knitters, but I love this little corner of the internet with all of you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sitting here for the entire time I've rambled on and thank you for dealing with me sitting literally in a dark room with just a couple lights to keep it lit. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Honestly, my face hurts from smiling this much. I smile more in this podcast talking to you guys than I probably do. It just makes me so happy to sit here and talk with you guys. And I love it so much. And I love you for spending time with me. So thank you for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. I hope you put a little bit of love in every stitch you're making while watching this today. And I will see you guys again in a couple weeks for my next episode. So happy knitting.